Thank you. Let's listen to words to my Senate office today, team today. Words from a brave ADF veteran with a distinguished record of serving our country and now serving veterans across the country. He opens with a quote from British Judge Sturgis. Justice is open to everyone in the same way as the Ritz Hotel, end of quote. Announcing this cart before the horse decision today, just three days after the release of the Royal Commission into veteran suicide findings, a day after the 23rd anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, a day that forever changed the lives of these men and women, and on Are You OK Day in Australia is nothing short of cruel. Still, the motives are clear. To divert attention from the failures of Defence Force leadership and from the government, and once again shift the blame onto a few men from the SASR who were in action. The timing is no coincidence. It's a calculated move to protect those at the top while scapegoating those who served on the front lines. If medals are to be revoked from those at the tactical and operational levels for their soldiers' alleged war crimes from allegations over, from over a decade ago, ultimate responsibility must rest with the commanders in charge at the time. Accountability should start at the top with those who approved the missions and made the strategic decisions. Without holding senior leadership accountable, this action becomes nothing more than scapegoating those on the ground. And I would say accountability must start at the top. Let's keep going with the ADF veterans' words. Accountability in the military is paramount, yet what we've witnessed is the preemptive punishment of a few and a violation of due process. The chain of command ensures accountability at every level, meaning responsibility for success and failure is shared. Just my own comment. In, in business, in sport, accountability is the fundamental quality. Going back to the ADF veteran. Therefore, generals who commanded during these periods, these men are set to lose their honours and awards. From the commander of Joint Task Force 633 to the chief of the Defence Force, officers who for the most part did not see action but wear medals suggesting they did, should face the same preemptive punishment. Stripping medals from senior officers reinforces command responsibility and ensures leadership is held accountable for their decisions in command. It upholds fairness and integrity, demonstrating that no one is above accountability. He goes on. Article 28 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court establishes the principle of command responsibility, holding military commanders criminally liable for crimes committed by their subordinates if they knew or should have known and failed to prevent or punish them. The statute places a clear duty on commanders to control their forces, and failure to do so makes them legally responsible for their subordinates' actions. In light of this, if soldiers are to be held accountable for alleged war crimes, the same standard must apply to the commanders in charge at the time. From the commander of the Joint Task Force 633 to the chief of the Defence Force, command responsibility dictates that leadership cannot be insulated from the consequences of their decisions. Yet after 10 years, the fact remains no one has been convicted of war crimes. This tone deaf statement and its timing send a clear message from the top of the Defence Force and Government. It shows they've learned nothing from the declining recruitment and retention rates, the public's outrage over ADF's bloated staff ranks and their untouchable status, or the findings of the Royal Commission into Veteran Suicide. Watch as recruitment and retention in the enlisted ranks continues to plummet. That's the end of the quote from that ADF veteran, a distinguished ADF veteran, who feels that lo intense loyalty to the Defence Forces still, despite what's happened. And he, he's finished there with watch as recruitment and retention in the enlisted ranks continue to plummet. Why should he care? He's out. I'll tell you why he cares, because he cares about this country, as well as the ADF and the, and the veterans and those still serving. That's why this is so important. This affects culture, which is our ADF's secret weapon, as our most powerful strategic weapon. I'm not going to talk at length about that. I've talked about it before. Now, think about the culture in the Defence Force now, because we learn, apparently, that the Royal Commission didn't expect Defence to stonewall vital information, from, keep it from the Royal Commission. Why? Surely it's better to be open 
and lance the boil. No, they stonewalled. Oh, but then again, we learn now that three months ago, a coordination officer from Defence was awarded a conspicuous service cross for outstanding outcomes wow. in working with the Royal Commission. That begs the question, in Defence's eyes, what are outstanding outcomes? Here's some questions I asked in question time of Senator Wong, who I have a lot of regard for, representing the Minister for Defence, Richard Miles. Minister, on the recommendation of the then Chief of the Defence Force, General Angus Campbell, the government will strip distinguished service medals from soldiers for alleged allegations of war crimes that have not been proven in a criminal court, yet will not strip the Distinguished Service Cross Medal off General Campbell. So I asked her, why, Minister, do soldiers under General Cam Campbell's command lose medals while he keeps his medal for commanding them? I didn't get a satisfactory response. Then a second question. Minister, the Burton Report specifically excluded any findings on command accountability. Now, the Minister disagreed with me on that, to be fair. The Implementation Oversight Panel provided independent advice to government that the Burton Report in doing this was inappropriate and senior command accountability must be examined. That's the Oversight Report, the Implementation Oversight Report. So I asked the Minister, why are Defence's most senior leaders being let off scot-free for allegations in the Burton Report? And why is your government ignoring the Oversight Panel's advice? I didn't get a satisfactory answer. The last question I asked her, Minister, the criteria for the Distinguished Service Cross at the time General Campbell was nominated required him to be in action, meaning direct contact with an enemy, facing the enemy, being fired on by the enemy, actual engagement. Yet there are no records of General Campbell being in action. Why does the government, I asked her, refuse to have the honours awards and, and appeals tribunal examine his award? Why indeed? I've asked that question before in Senate estimates and got nowhere. We will continue. Labor moves an amendment now, we see, to Senator Lambie's motion. As my brief reading of it, the government waters down to urgently publish, as Senator Lambie's uh, fine motion states, to urgently publish a comprehensive timeline. It, the government now wants to water down with an amendment to calls on the government to urgently work towards work towards no commitment. So I want to thank Senator Lambie for this motion. I want to thank her for her work and for her, her speaking strongly for, for veterans and enlisted people. I want to thank Senator Shoebridge, who's left the chamber, but nonetheless I thank him for his work as well. I'll finish by saying our Defence Force's most powerful strategic weapon is the Australian Defence Force culture. That includes mateship and accountability. Very, very strong. I've heard about it, talked about, talked, uh, heard it from many, many uh, sailors, airmen and soldiers. They respect it, they understand the power of it. I've heard it from officers, I've heard it from veterans, I've heard it from, from enlisted ranks. We've been watching it unravel for years, listening to soldiers, airmen and sailors, officers, enlisted men, men and women, veterans. It's unravelling and yet it's the key to our defence forces. This is a prize that must be guarded with reverence. And yet at Senate Estimates, I'm disappointed to see that the senior brass don't seem to understand it. Implementation of the recommendations of this Royal Commission must be sincere, meaningful and informed to restore accountability and to restore culture in the Australian Defence Forces. We will be watching as I'm sure Senator Lambie and Senator Shoebridge and others will be. This is the House of Review. As representatives of the people we serve, we will be watching and holding the government accountable. Veterans, we also serve veterans current and current forces because they have served us. They have served our country with distinction. We serve all the people of Australia and that's why we will be watching to see their implementation of this Royal Commission. Thank you.